Many years ago, Mba Ayamga here worked as a soothsayer. Part of his job was to use divinations to tell whether a child born with deformities was a spirit or not. If such a child was found to be a spirit child, Ayamga would tell the parents what to do with him or her. It is known that such children were often administered concoctions that would kill them if they were spirits. And if they were not, they survived after being forced fed with a concoction. But a lot of times, the infants died because studies later showed that the concoctions were poisonous and could kill even adults. Ayamga says... His own divinations never involved killing the children or administering any potions to them. Rather, a ritual was performed at his shrine in the hope that these infants would be exorcised of the spirits and their deformities reversed. <laughs> I never give them anything to drink. The requirement here in my shrine was for sacrifices to be made. So, some chickens, a goat, food, and drinks will be provided for the rituals. We all eat the food and peace returns to the home. The truth is, these children are never spirits to begin with. They are just children born with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy encompasses a number of disorders that affect a person's ability to move and maintain balance or posture. This has to do with the brain and it is common in children. No spiritual ritual can reverse the condition. There is no cure for it, but treatment can help improve the lives of affected persons especially if the treatment starts early. For this reason, Africans Ghana, a child rights and community development NGO working in northern Ghana, began some interventions about 21 years ago in the Kasana Nankana Municipal, Kasana Nankana West, and Bongo districts where cerebral palsy was common and the spirit child phenomenon was also widely practiced. David Pualua is the country director of Africans Ghana. Somewhere in uh, 2012, that was when we jointly marked the end of uh, the spiritual phenomena with the local communities in the Kasna Nankana area. After that event, community members started bringing out children willingly and seeking for support to help rehabilitating these children. Over 80% of the children that were brought to our attention were children who were living with cerebral palsy. And this situation necessitated our launching of a cerebral palsy intervention. We have over the years reach out to over 500 children who are living with the condition. Africans Ghana's interventions included community mobilization and advocacy programs which eventually got the soothsayers or concoction men to abandon their practices of the spirit child phenomenon. These concoction men were provided alternative livelihood support to help them earn a regular income rather than depending on the income they got as practitioners of what could only be described as infanticide. Mba Ayamga joined the group of reformed concoction men called the Right to Life Promoters and became an advocate for the rights of children with disabilities. They gave me goods to rear, money for farming, and a bicycle to help me move around. So, I'm able to comfortably fend for myself because the ghosts have reproduced. We are enlightened now, so we know they are here to help us. 
Four cerebral palsy centers have also been established at Sirigu in the Kasna Nankana West District, as well as Dua, Via, and Fio, all in the Bongo District, to give physiotherapy, massages, and paper based assistive devices to help children with cerebral palsy. This child I am holding was one and a half years old when I first came to this center. At the time, he could not even sit up. But after going through the treatments, he is now able to walk and eat on his own. He is five years old now, so I am hoping to put him in school soon. This year's team for World Cerebral Palsy Day a world that's made for everyone underscores the critical importance of accessibility and inclusion for individuals with cerebral palsy. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Sirigo, Kasnanankana West District.